In last month's newsletter, we introduced the basic concepts of high-voltage cable testing using a water hose analogy. This month, we'll describe exactly what's going on when you get high pot failures. When a cable fails the high pot test, Cirrus testers display one of three errors. Overcurrent, had leakage, or dielectric failure. What does overcurrent mean? All cables have capacitance between each of the wires. When one wire is charged up to a higher voltage, a small amount of inrush current flows from the wire being charged. Think of it like this. If you put a cap on the end of your garden hose and turn on the water, water will flow until the hose is full. Then it stops. If the hose has a problem, however, the water keeps flowing and never stops. Cirrus testers monitor this inrush current to make sure that it quickly stops. If the inrush current lasts too long, there is a problem with that wire. The charging is stopped and it is marked as a failed high pot overcurrent error. If only one overcurrent failure is listed on the error report, it is due to a highly capacitive wire such as a shield. Since at least two wires must fail for a cable to be truly bad, you can set the option High Capacitance Shield to Is Allowed to overcome this problem. What does had leakage mean? Although wires in a cable are separated by insulation, if we put enough voltage on one wire while its neighbors are at zero volts, some small amount of current will leak through the insulation. It is also possible for this current to leak across the surface of a connector between adjacent pins, particularly if some kind of contamination like solder flux is present. Think of it like this. If your water hose had tiny weak spots or was leaky at the connection point, allowing a little bit of water to leak out as you turn the pressure up, you would have to decide how much leakage you would allow before you call it a bad hose. In cable testing, this setting is usually specified in megaohms, or millions of ohms. For example, if you have a spec that requires a minimum of 100 megaohms of insulation resistance at 1000 volts DC, using Ohm's law, the maximum amount of current that can leak from any wire before we call it bad is 10 microamps. When the amount of current leaking from the wire under test exceeds the acceptable level, as specified by you in your high pot settings, that wire fails the high pot test and is marked as had leakage. What does dielectric failure mean? Simply put, a dielectric failure is an arc. If you've ever been shocked by putting your finger near the screw of a switch cover, you've experienced a dielectric event. According to Passion's Law, at least 327 volts are required for electricity to arc in the air. In a cable assembly, it is most common for an arc to occur between two exposed pieces of metal that should be insulated. However, it is also possible for an arc to occur through the insulation. Think of it like this. In our hose, we crank up the pressure. All of a sudden, a weak spot fails and a lot of water suddenly squirts out. Since we are constantly monitoring the current flow, we quickly recognize this arc and shut off the water. That wire fails the high pot test. Dielectric failure is indicated. A couple of interesting challenges regarding dielectric failures. It is possible for an insulation breach that results in a dielectric failure to self-heal meaning that subsequent high pot tests may actually pass. It is possible for small solder slivers, which cause dielectric failures to be vaporized by the high pot test, meaning that subsequent high pot tests again may actually pass. It is also possible for these small solder slivers to leave a carbon track or be metallicized when they are vaporized by the high pot test, meaning that subsequent high pot tests will fail. Because of these issues, we recommend that any cable that fails a high pot test be closely checked and retested at least twice. For more information on using high voltage to test your cables, contact one of our technical sales specialists today.